Hi friends, my name is Kelly. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the book recommendations tag. I was tagged by Jess Reads and this is an original tag by Steph Borer. So I'm going to get right into the prompts today. The first one is a book you tell people is your favorite. Now that is an impossible question for me. So I'm going to tell you my favorite in a specific category. So my favorite Jane Austen is Persuasion. I love how passionate it is without them actually being in each other's physical proximity some of the time. It's just definitely one of my favorite classic novels of all time. So I'm gonna go with Persuasion for that one. Two, a book that is your guilty pleasure. <laughs> this is truly a guilty pleasure from my young days and that would be a Vampire Academy, Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. And it is just YA vampire fantasy that I used to read when I was younger. And it was definitely a guilty pleasure. So the next one, number three, a book everyone loved, but you didn't. And for that, I'm going to say The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I kept hearing great things from other people. And I actually did seem like I was going to like it early on. But then it just got too convoluted for me. And there was nobody I could root for at all. I just didn't feel like there was anyone that I could root for. The characters were just too immoral or amoral for me <laughs> to root for anybody. Nobody was like really standing out. So I DNF'd towards the end of the book. The next prompt, number four, a book you read the fastest, and that is one I a thriller I recently read, um, and that was um, when my sister let me borrow The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. It's a thriller, and I read it pretty fast because I wanted to know who the killer was in the story. Okay, number five, a book that deserves more hype. All right, so this is, and actually, does my daughter have it on her shelf? Okay, this isn't the first one. This is actually book two, but the first Crowns of Crosswald book um, by D.E. Knight is the author, and it is um, a fantasy. Uh, it deals with a young girl. It has the go-to magical school type elements, so it has a little bit of a Harry Potter-ish feel, and the publisher had reached out to me to see if I would um, be interested in reading it and reviewing it. And I barely had like any subscribers to my YouTube channel and barely anybody following me on Instagram. I was like, I don't know if this is going to be any good, but it ended up shocking me. I really liked it. It was a really good one. All right. Number six, a book that is becoming a movie TV show. Well, I'm going to say Daisy Jones and the Six for this. I read it probably a, a little over a year ago and it's by Taylor Jenkins Reid. She um, did this kind of as an interview style. Um, it was interesting seeing the different perspectives. Um, it is about a band um, you know, back in the day, I think this was the 1960s, maybe it was the 70s, but um, so, you know, it was about a band back then, so there is some sex, drugs, and rock and roll in the story, um, but yes, it, I thought it was a pretty, pretty well done book, and so it's going to be a TV series soon on Amazon Prime in the next couple of days. It may actually be today. I'm filming this on March 3rd. You'll see this on tu Tuesday for Tag Tuesday, but yeah, it may be today that it comes out. Number seven, a book that you have reread the most. And I think that's probably the children's classic, The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. The found family feel of that story and just the way that it makes me feel. Just, I love it. So I've read it several times over the years. Number eight, a book from a genre you don't typically read. I don't read a lot of contemporary romance. My, most of the romance that I have is in a historical fiction setting or a fantasy setting, sci-fi setting, that type of thing. So um, I did read a contemporary romance a little over a year ago, and that would be The People You Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. And I really did enjoy that one. It's one that is like a very slow burn, friends to lovers romance and um i there was limited romantic scenes that i have a conviction that i don't read um 
in-depth descriptions of sex scenes. So I was able to just, I don't think there was probably that much in-depth, but I just was able to flip literally go past half a page. And I think those scenes were over. I really re did enjoy the relationships and I'm going to try some more from Emily Henry in the future for sure. Number nine, a book that deserves all the hype that it gets. And I am going to say, because I have heard like some hate on it in recent years, The Hunger Games. And I believe that that book, I know it's a dystopian and a time where dystopian was kind of the thing to write for young adults and teens. But I feel like it is actual literature. Um, I really know that it's not a perfect story, but I feel like it has some important messages. Now, it's not a book that I would hand to an age nine or 10 year old. I think it is more for teens to discover some of these uglier aspects of human nature through this story, but I think it is actual real literature. All right, next we've got a book you usually recommend when asked to give a recommendation. So I am a mama and a homeschooler. So a lot of times I get recommend recommendation requests from other moms for their kids that are around my kid's age or for um, them as someone that's considering homeschooling. So I have two answers for this. So for the kid recommendation for like a middle grade type age, I've been recommending a lot a Place to Hang the Moon, which is by Kate Albus. And this is a historical fiction during um, World War II. Some siblings are billeted. I think it is just a beautiful found family story about these children that have been through so much. Um, so I just think it's a beautiful story. And then the homeschool mom recommendation that I like to suggest is the author Sarah McKenzie. And the book is Teaching from Rest. It just helps you understand and prioritize what's important in your homeschooling. It is from a Christian perspective, so just keep that in mind if you do not come from a Christian perspective or background, that it is from a Christian perspective. But I think a lot of the tips in there can be helpful even if you are not a Christian. All right, the next one is a book that has your favorite characters. And I know I talk about this book pretty much every week, but that would be Anna Green Gables. Anne herself is just so much fun. Gilbert Blythe, who is her frenemy at first and then becomes her love interest later. And then Matthew, the brother and sister that adopt the Matthew Marilla. They're just so precious. Matthew especially has a special place in my heart. So I would definitely say them. Then a book you wish you could live in. I don't have a specific answer for this. I just want to live at the beach. So I don't read a whole lot of your typical beach reads. So tell me what's the best be beach read that I can read and then that I could live in at the beach. Let me know in the comments, please. And then a book that you thought you would hate but ended up loving. That would be A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I've read this in high school and I thought it was probably gonna be pretty boring and I'd have trouble getting through it. And I ended up absolutely adoring it. I haven't read it since then. I needed to reread desperately. And then number 14, a book that made you cry. <laughs> Honestly, that has been being my kid's teacher this year, their history book. I am not a big crier for my reads, but we went through the Trail of Tears this year. You know, my ancestors were likely on the Trail of Tears because I have a lot of Cherokee and Choctaw blood. Um, and then we studied, you know, World War One and World War II, and the Holocaust was so hard to get through. And then we got to modern times and we got to September 11th. I got through two sentences and I had to stop and go to the bathroom and cry for five minutes and then come back. That was so hard to do because that was something that I actually lived through and had memories of. And I, it's like, it's hard to even talk about now. It was so hard to teach. All right, the last question is a book you wish you could read for the first time. This is so stereotypical of an answer, but I, um, I really wish that I could go back in time and read something I read when I was a child. And that is A Wrinkle in Time, which is by Madeline Lingle. And I just love 
the message of the book that good wins over evil, love always wins, and the way they use sci-fi in the book is just amazing. And I wish I could read that again for the first time. Well, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you guys are doing well and that you read a lot. Bye-bye.